nuts, tea nuts that is. I need tea nuts for this machine. I did win some at auction, some of which are high quality import items. Uh, the word center not known in foreign lands. But this machine uses, uh, has 5 8 inch T slots and I have a number of uh, clamping kits for the smaller mill which has 3 8 inch T, uh, T slots. But I want to be able to use those clamping kits on here. So there are no such thing as 5 8 inch wide T nuts with 3 8 16 threads in in existence not that you can easily buy so I will have to make some that's uh, that's a good thing because one thing the YouTube community likes is making stuff despite the fact that it's freely available but these aren't freely available um, and more importantly there are simply no videos anywhere in existence showing how to make tea nuts so it's best that i get that done for the good of the world let's go i happen to have this piece of a uh, very nice steel bar i believe it's 1018 because it's colored red and it came from mcmaster car and i think red on steel is their 1018 designator this also is going to give me the opportunity to have a refreshing drink uh sorry i mean test this cool mist system that was generously donated by a viewer who had watched my tractor wheel spacer project videos and saw the mess that was made by the flood coolant on this machine going everywhere which i don't really have a problem with but he suggested that this would be a much cleaner uh, an easier approach and uh, generously provided it and he's asked not to be named very specifically so uh, but he knows who he is and I'm incredibly grateful for this what I've done is uh, I've put a compressed air drop here up to the ceiling compressed air line that runs around the shop uh, so that there's always compressed air hooked up to this. And then that gives me this to have on hand as well. Uh, to test this out, this is the first time I've used it. I'm just gonna use this cup of coolant because this, this is the smaller portable system and uh, does not have enough draw to pull coolant up from the main tank. But I'm gonna try this out, see how I like it and probably make a small tank to hang off the side here. Right, I trammed in the vise using my handy dandy easy tram system and uh, let's just check that. I suppose I should have shown you that. Yeah, trammed in. Right, simple enough. I'll touch off on the top. That will get me my Z0 and then I'll come down the 285 and then I'll do the same on the sides. I'll touch off on the back side and then come in 3 16 and then come and touch off on the other side, come in 3 16 And I'm just gonna attempt to take that material in one pass. Um, and just see, I just wanna see how it goes. And once I've done that, then I'll come and drill and tap these holes and then I'll saw them, uh, saw the tea nuts. You stop naming nuts. And then clean up the ends.
I will try this one as a non-climb cut and uh, see if it's any different. You'll hear some squealing in this segment and uh, that's basically just where I was trying to both move the table and deal with the camera and at times I'd pause in the movement of the table and then the uh, end mill would start rubbing on the side and start howling. Obviously center drilling the hole positions, but I'm also just doing center marks at the points where I'm going to cut this into uh, individual nuts. And that's just to give me a visual reference when I take it to the bandsaw later. And getting the cool mist set up again, this time mounting it on the head so that the nozzle doesn't move away from the action as uh, as I move the table around. The current vogue for Tapping fluids is anchor lube, but I do like this Hangster Vazor tap. Whoa! No! After that fiasco, I decided to do all the rest of them just by hand tapping. And then a little deburring. A lot on that hole. And now here I'm using those center marks just to saw these T-nuts into length with a little bit of finishing up got them all cleaned up and ready to go and here I'm just using uh, an additional clamp just to make sure they don't move around when I clean up the ends so what happened there I wasn't going to show that because it was pretty embarrassing. I actually posted a picture of the broken tap in a forum that I'm in for YouTube machinists. And uh, someone pointed out, hey, you don't use a hand tap for power tapping. Of course you don't. I, could, I swore blind that I'd seen many of my favorite machinists power tap with hand taps. And I actually went back and uh, looked at all of those videos again. Pity I didn't do it before doing this job. Uh, and sure enough, no, none of them used a hand tap. They all used three flute um, spiral point taps. So I kind of bollocked up there a bit, uh, a lot actually. But that wasn't actually the reason that the tap broke. Um, I got away with that. I got away with the tapping aspect. Got lucky on that. What actually broke it was that uh, this machine freewheels so well. It's got so much inertia in the head and, and the head is so smooth that once... So what happened was 
once the tap had broken through, even though I'd shut the power off, the head just kept freewheeling and the tap kept going and uh, pretty quickly hit the bottom of the vise and that pushed the part up out of the vise and of course it didn't take long before that got to a, an angle that the tap couldn't stand anymore and it broke. So two pieces of dumbassery there. So I'm not sure I can actually use this machine to power tap because I don't have a way of stopping the spindle rotating. So until I make a break for it or something, I'm not sure this is a, a viable method on this machine. Um, maybe I'm missing something. It might be that if I'm if I get some practice in on it, I can turn the machine off before it finishes cutting the threads and then the um, inertia of the machine will kind of drive through the last few few threads and maybe that will uh, maybe that will take the energy out and slow it down enough so I'll, I'll, I'll give that a try and I'll do it in in such a way that the tap is uh, over and you know over air <laughs> doesn't have anything to run into um, so more to come on that a um, couple other things of note uh, you might notice that I've rearranged the cool mist setup and uh, thank you again to the very kind viewer who, who sent me that. So what I've done is I've put a longer hose on it with a smaller ID than I was using to extend the, the length of that. Uh, and now I'm able to draw fluid out of the flood coolant tank all the way up here and it sprays wonderfully well. And I also made a simple adapter to um, Re replace the very weak magnet that comes with this setup as standard and put it on a, a more standard instrument base which I had hanging around. So a little piece of scrap material and, uh, and a leftover magnetic base and this is uh, you know really really useful tool. I'm really liking that a lot so thanks again. And then finally but actually more importantly um, I'd like to make mention of a, a couple of channels First of all, Matty's Workshop. Uh, you must surely all know about Matty's Workshop, uh, but YouTube being what it is, it tends not to feed you the things you actually want to look at, and it took me a long while to discover. But uh, his videos are fantastic, and his craftsmanship is excellent, and he kindly sent me a, a very wonderful Christmas gift. So thank you, Matty, for that. Really appreciate it and really enjoy your content. And, uh, man, I just hope you're doing really well. I really do. Um, the other channel I would like to mention is uh, Joseph Higgins, um, who is a very well-known model engineer, makes some excellent model engines, and he has a series going right now on a, on a uh, oddball hit and miss engine, and he's showing how you can make these excellent engines using um, kind of more basic techniques, if you like. So if you have limited workshop equipment, need not stop you from making really excellent models and engines. So really recommend you go and check that out. Um, and links to both of those channels will be below. So other than that, thank you all for watching. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button and subscribe button, if you haven't already, that'd be really appreciated. It helps the channel grow and I'm not doing this for money or anything, but um, just trying to grow the channel a bit. So if you do that, I'd appreciate it. But other than that, stay safe and well wherever you are in the world. And as always, be seeing you.